machine taken on by emancipation and at this stage it was obvious that Quinton and Dittman were feeling out the situation. Neither wanted the lead and both were giving the other one the opportunity to go to the front if he so desired. But it's Quinton now taking up the initiative on the grey mare and emancipation goes clear of Sir Dapper. What's this move here though? Tempestuous and Shoemaker moves up quickly. What's Sir Dapper's head? Go up in the air. That's where the injury was sustained by the champion cult when Tempestuous in a freakish incident took a chunk out of Sir Dapper's near foreleg right behind the knee. Clear gold is running fourth and the grey Queensland Galloper Sovereign Chief is last but look how slowly they're going. A very muddling pace around the top turn, Emancipation with the ears pricked as the leader, Sir Dapper second, at this stage he wasn't feeling the effects of the injury but he did later when Dittman put him under pressure. Clear goal third, Tempestuous fourth and Sovereign Chief is last of the five. No change in order, as they come down towards the 600 metres mark, Emancipation is galloping well within herself, Sir Dapper looked to be going equally as well at this point of the race, Tempestuous holding clear gold in the pocket and Sovereign Chief is now being niggled along as they turn for home. Now watch closely as they come up the rise in the straight, there's absolutely no doubt Sir Dapper put his head in front, but Dickman is the first one to appear a little anxious, Quinton on Emancipation had a peep over and I think it was about here that Quinton sensed victory. He could see that Dittman had no petrol left in the tank whatever and now Sir Dapper starts to feel that leg and shift his ground outwards in the last 40 or 50 metres which is just not Sir Dapper. Emancipation beat him three quarters of a length and clear gold was in third place. From another angle, Emancipation, a bowl-going mare with big floppy ears, uh, starts to draw away in the last bit. Look at Sir Dapper starting to bore outwards under pressure, and they must have finished about four horses apart when the judge called a halt. Do you know, it was still a mighty effort by Sir Dapper to finish within three quarters of a length of the champion mare, but there's a great close-up of Emancipation. She's a mountain of power. To what I did really, uh, I thought Mick might have been anxious to lead and I just let him give him the chance to lead if he wanted to. How hard was it to put the pressure on him? You got a neck, were you frightened he was going to kick up all the time? Not really, he, he seemed quite content to let me go and uh, she pulled a little bit the first, uh, say, 300 metres but then she settled beautifully in front and then once I got to the three I started to let her stride a bit because I wanted to make it a fairly hard last 600 and uh, she can sustain it. When she topped the rise, Ron, and uh, he put his head in front, how did Ron Quinton feel then? Well, uh, I looked across and I could see that he didn't have really a lot of petrol in the tank. And I said, well, I'm still here with a great chance because this mare's never been going to the post better in her life. And uh, when he first came up, I was concerned naturally. But then I looked and I could see he was under a bit of pressure. And I thought, well, I've, I know I've got a little bit more petrol in my tank. Have you ever ridden a better horse? I don't think so, Ken. You know, she'd have to be right up there with Kingston Town, who I only rode occasionally, won the Cox Plate on him, but by gee, you know, she's a great mirror, right, Ken. She don't get beat very often.